Hello and welcome to some Mac action. I'm your host, Matthew Mott for Linux.com. Joined here by Patrick Monin, Jacob Blaine, and Anthony Elio. We got Buffalo at Ohio. Three-point spread. This is probably the Mac game I'm looking forward to most on the week. Although, I don't know if I necessarily think this game is going to be close. Jacob, I'll kick it off with you because you're good at football analysis and really tearing it up on the year if you follow Jacob's Twitter betting picks. So, let's hear it. Well, it sounds like you're going to be leaning Buffalo in this game. Um, but I'm actually going to take Ohio here. Uh, I like them at home. Um, so I'll, I'll jump into some stats. But first, I did want to note that the winner of this game will take first place in the MAC East. So some huge implications here. Um, Buffalo is riding a hot five-game win streak. Uh, they started the season 0-3, including a home loss to Holy Cross from the SCS. Um, won five straight since then. But if you look at their MAC wins, uh, they're pretty shaky um they beat eastern michigan with a backup quarterback a week after they had that big game over arizona state they beat miami of ohio uh with their backup quarterback and they did beat bowling green by a significant margin but uh the falcons finished with a um oh three on fourth down and a minus three turnover margin in that game so you look at these results and i think they're primed for regression um this is a team that lost more than any other team in the transfer portal picked up a lot of talent as well but there's a lot of turnover for them on both sides of the ball. And I think that you're going to see Ohio win this game primarily because of the play of Curtis Work, their quarterback. Uh, he's actually the second grade quarterback on PFF uh, among any quarterback with uh, among quarterbacks with 100 plus dropbacks. And this Buffalo secondary has been relatively vulnerable, uh, especially due to some injuries on that side of the ball. Um, the, the Buffalo has the third most fumble recoveries and overall takeaways. So they have the ninth best turnover margin. There's also some regression there. Uh, their sack rate has gone down significantly. Uh, they're just 80th in sacks this year, and that's where they're, they've really thrived in the past. My biggest concern with this game, and why I'm not just taking the Ohio money line, is the Ohio defense is really terrible. Um, they gave up 700, 736 yards to Kent State, 640 to the FCS team, Fordham, and they're allowing the most passing yards per game of any FBS team. Uh, you're going to see Cole Snyder, uh, the Buffalo quarterback, have a solid game overall. I think his stats are a little bit misleading. Uh, I think his you know, advanced metrics suggest he's not as good as he's been in terms of raw numbers. But I think both offenses will find success. But I'm going to take the points with the home team. I think Buffalo is primed for aggression. I like Ohio to win this game outright. I'll wait to rebuttal until people watching the video forget all the good points you made. So I'll let Anthony go next. Excellent. Let's follow it up with some bad points by me. I am liking Buffalo minus three. Um, now, Buffalo is on a 4-0, 0 cover run uh, in the conference, which I do like. Both these offenses are putting up similar numbers in terms of points, around 31, 32 points per game. But I do think the defense is going to be the key here. These are two very different defenses. Buffalo is only allowing less than 400 yards per game. Ohio closer, closer to 500 and 34.4 points per game right now. I'm liking QB Cole Snyder, and I do like this multifaceted run attack. Uh, I'm liking the Bulls to win and take control of the MAC East. Patrick? Yeah, I'm on Ohio here as well. And I, I would even take this number now because I think there's a slight chance it could dip down below three, though I doubt it. Um, two competent offenses, pretty dreadful defenses on both sides right now, so I also don't think... The over is a bad bet, but the reason I really like Ohio here is is Curtis Ford. He's really burst on the scene this year, and and people can say stop lying about his big big break. This man stands over six foot five in the pocket, over two two thousand four hundred yards on the season, eight point eight yards a pass. This man has an NFL body and a solid arm, and he's going against a Buffalo defense that ranks one hundred twenty first in EPA on um, passing defense right now. So I I think that's a serious mismatch that is in Ohio's favor. Ohio also struggles against the pass. They're effectively bottom 20 in the FBS in most key metrics, but Buffalo doesn't possess the same threat to exploit this that the Bobcats do. They're actually more of a run-first offense, which plays more to Ohio, plays more to their comfort zone. So I think Ohio ends up scoring quicker more often at home here. I'll leave the points with them. Patrick, did you say Buffalo? Where do you have Buffalo rated that low for EPA on pass defense? What website are you using? Uh, I was just looking at it this morning. Do you have co contrarian numbers? I I mean, I like CFB graphs. That's where I go to for quite a bit. And they have Buffalo as the 54th ranked defense when it comes to EPA against the pass. 
Jacob tiebreaker. No, that's that's the same number I, I had written down, Matt. Um, okay. Not not to ruin your flow, Patrick. No, I, I still think they're they're worse against the pass, but anyway. No, they definitely no, are worse, way worse against the pass. You're correct there. One they're way percent. worse against the pass than they are against the run. So I, I think I, I, the point stands. Curtis Rooker's is having a great game. I'm also on the over here. I don't know if I mentioned that. I don't know how you guys feel about the total, but I think it's going to be a really high scoring game. I think both offenses have the upper hand against the opposing defenses. So this is where I stand. I I get it. I get that. The passing game from Ohio for Ohio should be, you know, it it should do well in this game. But I don't think when you can't run the football, which I don't think Ohio will be able to do against Buffalo, it you become one dimensional. It becomes way harder to pass in a football game. And I just the fact that Ohio only, I mean, not that Kent State is a, I mean, they're not a good defense, and they were only able to put up twenty four against them. I really think Buffalo holds Ohio to less than. 28 points in this one and I think Buffalo gets around 31 to 38 so I feel pretty comfortable taking him at the minus th- at the minus three number I actually I just think this Buffalo defense it's not just the stats it's from what I've seen the schemes have been good enough like the players are good enough that in a MAC conference they're just going to continue to it's not dominate dominate they're not going to keep teams to 10 points but they're not going to let them get close enough to their offense. I, I think Buffalo is going to be the winner in the MAC. That's my bold prediction right now. I mean, the stats do somewhat back me on EPA per play, they're ninth in the country on defense. Um, Football Outsiders has the four, has them as the 47th ranked defense in the country on FEI, which in terms of the MAC world, that's unheard of. That's like my mind hurts thinking about a 47th ranked defense playing in the MAC. And their defensive line is ranked 52nd in average line yards allowed. I will say my one concern is the really good point Jacob brought up that from what I've seen of Buffalo, their pass rush has not been getting where I want it to be. So if they do give a little too much time, like this isn't the most confident pick I have, but I do at the end of the day, I I definitely lean Buffalo at minus three. I think minus one Oh five is a value. I also create another little parlay. If you watch the first Mac video, there's a parlay there with total points. And it's not one that you and Patrick are, agree- are going to agree with because I have Ohio under 31 and a half and I have Buffalo over 30 and a half points. And uh, that parlay gets you plus 220 odds and I feel pretty comfortable with it. I, again, don't think Ohio gets the 30, think Buffalo gets there and that's where I'm placing my money. Patrick, Jacob already talked a little bit if you want a rebuttal as well. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to double down on the over in this game, really. <laughs> My main rebuttal, I guess, is that I just think Ohio's off. Like, Buffalo is not really well positioned at all to stop this Ohio offense. And I do think, like, playing at home in this spot matters, especially in these early mad games. I just think three points. So you're potentially telling me it's, this is a pick on a neutral field, and I'm getting the team that I think has the bigger mismatch. And I, I also think, like, the other way around, I think Buffalo's offense is also going to be able to move in this game. So I I do like the over, overall. And I think even the fact that it plays to a higher scoring contest favors a three-point spread. Anthony, let you touch on the over-under, and then I'll let Jacob destroy all my points. Going to keep it simple. I like the over. Uh, the Ohio Bobcats let the Fordham Rams score 52 points on them. And both teams are on over streaks against winning teams. And I like that. So, and it's a Mac game. I'm just going to keep it simple and take the over. All right, Jacob, let her rip. So, one thing I do want to mention about that Fordham game um, is early in the season, you saw this team have some uneven results, but they do have a new head coach. So, they're kind of implementing a new identity, and it's it's been a lot better recently. They're coming off a big win against Northern Illinois. Um, but you said that Buffalo's not going to let them run the ball, but Buffalo is one of only 14 FBS teams allowing over five yards per carry this year. And it doesn't really matter who they faced. They've just been terrible against the run. They're only the third most explosive rushing plays in the, the country this year. Um, Ohio has kind of found something with this running back who I'm going to butcher his name. Uh, C.A. Bangura, I believe. Uh, we'll probably find out while watching this game how to pronounce his name, how to pronounce his name because he'll be rushing all over the Buffalo defense. But the point stands. I think Buffalo's run defense is not very good. Uh, 
they're just a team due for aggression, and I think Ohio's going to win this game. If this drops to two and a half, which I think there's a chance it does by kickoff, just take the money line. I'm pretty confident in Ohio. Uh, I'm just taking the plus three for a little bit of extra push protection, but I think they're going to win this game all right. So That's fair. I mean, it's interesting because I did make this comment before the video that many teams in the MAC, like their EPA stats don't necessarily line up for the average yards allowed stats. Like, according to football or CFB graphs, they're the third ranked EPA rush defense. But like you said, they are allowing quite a bit per carry. So I don't know. It, it hurts my brain, but I'm going to lean on my on the advanced analytics here and kind of what I've seen out of, the, out of this Buffalo defense. <sighs> Yeah, you know, I, I mean, the over in this game, I think, is a play that everyone seems to agree with. So we at least have some place that if you're watching this video, there is a consensus on and uh, we'll see what happens. So to wrap it up, Ohio plus three for Jacob and Patrick Buffalo minus three for Anthony and myself over 50 and a half for all of us. And I gave a quick little shout to that little parlay I created under 31 and a half Ohio team total points and over 30 and a half. Buffalo team total points at plus 220. All right, it's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. Click the bell to get notified when our videos go up. Check out Lions.com for more great analysis. And check out our YouTube channel where we're going to be covering all the midweek action. All right, see you for the next one very soon.